We are in Mobile, Alabama at the GoDaddy.com Bowl, and we are on the topic of upsets as the MAC champion, Northern Illinois, sets to go, set, gets ready to go up against number two in the nation and champions of, well, nothing in particular, not even champions of their own conference, not even of their own division, yet they're ranked here number two in the nation, and they're going against number 31, Northern Illinois. The reason we talk about upsets, well, we just saw what happened moments ago. Cincinnati over, over Arkansas to move on to the next round. Arkansas was in the Final Four last year. For Alabama, this is their third trip to the BCS playoffs. They were in the Final Four a couple of years ago. Uh, actually, it's their fourth trip to the BCS playoffs. They are in the Final Four two years ago before being upset by Arizona. Arizona would go on to win the national title game that year. Still on the topic of upsets. Last season, Alabama. A lot of people thought we were going to see Iron Bowl 2 between Alabama and Auburn. That didn't happen as Alabama was upset in overtime by Texas A&M. And in the, this bowl game, the GoDaddy.com Bowl in Mobile, number one undefeated Auburn was upset by number 32 Troy, the champion of the Sun Belt. This whole topic of upsets all kind of merges together and ends right back up here in Mobile as Northern Illinois, who last season made it to the BCS playoffs for the first time in their team's history, was absolutely destroyed, hammered, and whooped by the Wisconsin Badgers. The Badgers were also upset this season by West Virginia. After giving up a 21-point first quarter lead, the Badgers were unable to score for the rest of the game. Northern Illinois, in their second ever trip here to the BCS playoffs, hopes they can forget about that game last year and pull the upset at the very same stadium where Auburn was upset last year by Troy. And Chandler Harnish wants to get things off to a really good start by rushing for a first down. If anything, the Huskies from NIU, they have a chip on their shoulder. They're coming into this one as conference champions. Alabama, not only are they not conference champions, they're not even division champions. But yet, they are number two in the nation. They have a huge chip on their shoulder as a Nick Saban-led team, and they are hoping they can make a run at a national championship. They were oh so close two years ago. They made it all the way to the Final Four, and then they were upset in overtime by Arizona. Arizona would go on to defeat Boise State on a last-second touchdown pass. Whew, we got all that out of the way. On a second down and seven, Chandler Harnish overthrows his man. And you can't overlook this Chandler Harnish. 26 touchdowns, only five interceptions, 2,942 2 yards passing. He, he's probably going to reach 3,000 in this game. If not with that throw, that's going to be a first down. And you definitely cannot overlook Chandler Harnish, one of the better players in the nation. Martell Moore came in with that grab. And... Certainly for Harnish, he's been on TV quite a bit. The Mac had that contract with ESPN where they had those Tuesday night, Friday night games. And they put on some shows. And right now, NIU is driving here on the Alabama Crimson Tide. They are going to fake the handoff. They fooled one defender but didn't fool the other as Chandler Harnish tried to roll out. And he was tackled by Jarrell Harris for the Alabama Crimson Tide. The senior linebacker. Take us to a second and 14. Harnish will continue to work out of the gun. Harnish is pressured and he's going to throw that one away incomplete. Third down and 14. The Huskies hoping their drive doesn't stall out. The GoDaddy.com Bowl. Probably one of the biggest upsets in college football history happened in this stadium one year ago. That one's going to go incomplete as that hit his receiver right in the hand and fell to the turf. And you see Dante Hightower, who's pretty excited about that. So Alabama, after giving up a few big plays to Chandler Harnish in this Northern Illinois Husky offense, uh, the Tide is going to find themselves with the ball quickly. It's a cold afternoon here in Mobile. Alabama, if they win, they will get the 
next pick of the seven remaining second round bowl games. We already know that LSU took their first pick. There's There was Heisman hopeful Trent Richardson picking up an easy first down. LSU, they already took the Liberty Bowl up against, uh, going up against Georgia in the second round. If Alabama wins here, they'll get the next pick of the seven bowl games, and a lot of people thinking maybe they'll chick pick, pick the Chick-fil-A Bowl in Atlanta. Maybe they'll head to Florida, play in a bowl down there. Time will tell. They might not even get the choice to pick if NIU can pull off what's been the key word of this game so far, upset. Richardson with a six-yard carry on that last play. Brings up second down and four. McCarron will give it to Richardson again. This time Richardson will go down. Met back at the line and tackled Tommy Davis was able to get back there. The junior with the tackle. Third down and five, and it looks like McCarron will be forced. To, no, they won't. Good, yeah, McCarron's going to keep it himself. First down for the Crimson Tide in to NIU territory. So he's faking to Richardson. Everybody pulls to the right, and McCarron pulls to the left. Easy first down for Alabama. And you see uh, Richardson and McCarron coming together, knowing that that play worked to perfection. And when, when plays work to perfection like that in football, it's an exciting moment for not only the team, but the fans. They do the same exact play again. Oh, how do you fool a team on the same exact play? All they did was swap it. That was the same exact play, but they went to the other side. And NIU fell for it again. That's not going to help your team pull the upset. McCarron. I'm sorry, I'm chuckling a little bit, but I don't know how you let that happen. We are sold out here at Lad People Stadium in Mobile. Lots of fans from the home state to support their Crimson Tide handoff to Richardson. And he's going to get five on the run. A few NIU fans making the long trip from Illinois down to this one. But this one completely sold out with a lot of Crimson Tide fans. Definitely a road feel for NIU as we got a flag. That will back him up five yards. So that false start, that'll help out NIU just a touch, but for the most part, this has been a wonderfully drawn-out first drive for Nick Saban and company. Looks like they're going to give it to... No, they're not. Every time I say that, they pass it. End zone, way too simple. Touchdown. And Shelley have that one, Jeremy Shelley for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Or Brad, what am I saying? Brad Smelly, the tight end. Gets it for touchdown number five on the year. And the Crimson Tide opening drive marched right down on NIU to take a seven to zero lead. Well, the Huskies, they're going to need to retaliate here. I don't think Alabama will give you too many opportunities with the game being close. This might be, for Northern Illinois, their one and only opportunity with the game this close. If Alabama has the potential to really open things up. They're going to go to the running game, trying to channel the Trent Richardson of their own with their running back Jasmine Hopkins and not too much for him Hopkins just needs a hundred yard day to be over a thousand on the year he's got 15 touchdowns they give it to Hopkins again and Hopkins is tackled behind the line was that I think it was Don yeah was it no that wasn't I can't get a number on him I, my apologies for that third down and 12 though for NIU and you'd almost think that Chandler Harnish is going to have to put it in the air. He's going to do so from the gun. Lots of time. He heaves it deep. Oh, he got it into double coverage. That is completed. How about that throw from Chandler Harnish? That was more that, that got it down at the 30. Into double coverage. 
and NIU picks up the first down. So they're they're making things interesting. It's not going to be easy for the Crimson Tide. And the handoff will get them five yards. That was Hopkins. Take us to a second down and five with the football on the 25-yard line. And actually, I think that was Daniels who was in on the last on the last run. Yeah, that was Daniels. Hopkins probably on the sideline resting up just a bit, so they got to keep Daniels in. Third down and four. Harnish incomplete was looking for an open receiver and that would have been a score if he had, could have gotten it past the Crimson Tide defense so instead they'll have to settle for three. It'll be a 40 yard field goal and they put it through. So NIU will get points on the board. And if anything, it was Matthew Sims who stuck it through from 40. They scored more points than Boise State did here in the BCS playoffs. They got three so far. Still shocked at that. Absolutely shocked that Boise State only able to score two points. That's zero points offensively. You think it's zero points offensively. Not only Boise, but Wisconsin in their game. Zero offensive points. That's a high-powered offense. Nonetheless, we're here. Go Daddy Bowl. I think I see Danica Patrick down there. I don't know. Maybe. Someone with black hair, but McCarron's going to go down. That's going to be a three-yard loss for A.J. McCarron and the Huskies. They're playing the Crimson Tide tough right now. We're heading into the second quarter. Each team has traded a couple of possessions. You see all the Crimson here in Lad People Stadium in Mobile, Alabama. The site of one of the biggest upsets in college football history when Troy took down Auburn last season. Will we see the upset happen again? Right now, it's a close one. It's only a four-point game between Alabama and Northern Illinois. Trent, no, Trent Richardson will not get it. A.J. McCarron almost that same exact fake play. This time, though, Richardson didn't really sweep. It was just a simple fake handoff draw play, and... AJ McCarron ran it. As long as that keeps working, might as well do it. I mean, they're they're fooling NIU on these play actions. Much too simple right now for the Crimson Tide. Incomplete. His man didn't even know that McCarron had threw the ball. He was looking for Williams, the tight end, and he hit him right in the back, right in the back of the helmet. And NIU will take back over, so defensive stop for NIU. They let Alabama drive and score, but that time the Huskies will come up with a defensive stop. And now, if Chandler Harnish and this Husky crew can keep the momentum rolling, maybe they can drive down and score, take the lead. Harnish will throw it incomplete. Just threw it past his receiver. Second down and 10 at the 30. Harnish from the gun. Four wide receivers and the back. Connects with his man and will get two yards. Nothing more than that. That was Palmer. That Nathan Palmer that got it. The third, third and eight. The pressure is on. And NIU is able to get a first down and we're into Crimson Tide territory. The pressure Chandler Harnish was feeling and at the last possible minute he just chunked it out the Hopkins who raced forward the senior to not only get the first down but to bring NIU into Alabama territory. At the 45 yard line, the 44 yard line of the Crimson Tide. Harnish will continue to work out of the gun. Harnish has a wide open man, and he'll get three yards on that pass completion. Nick Saban is pacing right now. He threw that one to Sismich. Tim Sismich. 
tight end. Second and seven. Harnish. Looking for the tight end again. And he had it, but then he got hit. And that's how powerful this Crimson Tide team is. They'll lay you out. Force, force you to drop it. Nico Johnson, the linebacker from Andalusia, Alabama, was the one that got in there and forced the ball to hit the turf. They get NIU's third downs. Three for five. That's been really well. They're going to run it. I don't like when coaches do that. We've seen that a couple of times here in the BCS playoffs when coaches do those little sweet play things on third down and tens. I mean, it, just, it doesn't work. I, I don't like it. Now a really good drive where Char Ch Chandler Harness was throwing the ball well. It gets stopped because you try to run it. I don't know. Crimson Tide football once again. About 3.17 to go. This will be their third drive of the football game. They got the ball at the 20-yard line. They give it to Trent Richardson, and he has an opening. It's going to be five yards on the ground for Trent. Takes us through a second and five at the 26 yard line. Three wideouts now, two men in the backfield. McCarron will throw it. McCarron will screen pass it out to Richardson. And that'll be close to an Alabama first down. It'll be inches and I'd almost expect either a Richardson run or one of those fakes where McCarron runs it. Let's see. Do they dare do the fake? No, they're going to run it with Richardson that time. And I think NIU, they kind of waited a second. They were thinking the fake was coming. Instead, McCarron put it right into the breadbasket of Richardson. First down, Crimson Tide. They move it to the 32-yard line. Only one loss on their season. A.J. McCarron gets the first down. A team that certainly has national championship admirations on this year. I think anything less than that for this team would be a disappointment. We have a flag offside, so it's going to be a free play for Alabama. And what a free play it is. Let's go to the head referee, Ed Hockey Lee Jr. It was Darius Hanks who ran the ball right up into the heart of the Husky defense. They're doing a really good job of pounding it out on the ground. There goes Richardson for six yards. Probably one of the better teams we've seen so far in the Bowl Championship Series playoffs in terms of ground and pound and getting yards on the ground with the running game. Second and four, McCarron will throw it and has his man first down inside the red zone for the Crimson Tide. He hooked up with the Andrew White on that play, the freshman. There's Richard No, that's Eddie Lacy on the run. He's got in there for a yard. In our version of the game of the century earlier this year on a preview game, Lacy scored the only touchdown of the game. Richardson fighting to stay on his feet. Number three will have it on a third down and three. A lot of threes. Hoping to keep NIU at three. See what I did there? McCarron. That same exact play and didn't fool him this time. It didn't fool him. McCarron had an opening. And it did not fool NIU. Fool me once, fool me twice. You won't fill, fool me three times. That number again, three. It's eerie. And we have a flag as Alabama looks for three. There's too many threes right now. Oh, man, that offsides will give Alabama an automatic first down. What a blunder. And who the heck do they... Oh, my gosh, who was that that just got... Was that the kicker? Oh! 
Oh, it just happened there. Number 90. Yeah, Jeremy Shelley, the kicker. He took the snap. I don't think they ever brought the offense back out onto the field. Jeremy Shelley, the kicker, took the snap. I don't think NIU was prepared. And Shelley ran it in for the score. Nick Saban is pulling a Mad Hatter. Digging deep into the bag of tricks. The kicker, Jeremy Shelley, takes the snap and runs it in for the second Alabama touchdown of the game. I, I've truly seen it all now in this sport. Not just in this sport, but in this playoffs. <laughs> what more can be said after that after you see the kicker? Chandler Harnish will now try to pull his best Jeremy Shelley impersonation. He'll get a first down. And that's the only thing I can think of what happened. Immediately, they got the first down. They just kept the kicking crew out there. Harnish will chunk it deep down the field. Dangerous. Incomplete. I mean, did, do they prepare that in practice? I mean, how, you must have your head on a swivel to be able to have just kicked the field goal, have an offside, and have coach say, all right, you're going to take the snap and run it in. It's got to be something they have prepared. I don't know. We are winding down now. Chandler Harness chunks it deep again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. But <laughs> that didn't quite work out for me. did have single coverage, so you can't really fault him on the throw. But it is going to be inter easily intercepted by Nathan McAllister. Or no, excuse me. Dequan, Dequan, Dequan Menzi. That's his second interception of the year for Dequan. Dequan Mazine. First and ten, and they're just going to give it to Richardson to maybe run out this half, but instead... Richardson with a brilliant run. That's all Nick Saban wants. 14 to 3. It's been a fun and enter I don't know if I've ever laughed this hard ever watching a football game. It's been an entertaining wild first half between the champions of nothing, Alabama. And I don't mean that as disrespect. I mean honestly, they don't have they didn't win any championships this year against the champions of the MAC. They're going at it toe-to-toe -to -toe here at the GoDaddy Bowl. We're back in Mobile, Alabama, the GoDaddy.com Bowl. Alabama Crimson Tide going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the MAC champs. The Northern Illinois Huskies making their second straight BCS playoffs appearance. And here's been your first half story, Chandler Harnish. Really struggling to kind of get things going. They've had a couple of successful plays here and there, which has led to a field goal. And you see the one turnover right there, which came late as Harnish was trying to get the first seven points on the board. Well, Nick Saban, who has pulled craziness out of his hat, would you believe your field goal kicker taking a snap on a shotgun and running in for a set? Uh, 20-yard touchdown on first down. Would you believe Trent Richardson burning this Husky defense for 60-plus yards and a touchdown? Trent Richardson. And there's been some comments made, certainly on the Facebook page, about how Richardson got all these postseason rushing awards when Monty Ball was truly the, the class of the running backs this year. But in terms of BCS playoff appearances, Monty Ball, who did absolutely nothing in the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, and you look at what Trent Richardson's done here today in the GoDaddy.com Bowl, I might just be inclined to take those statements back. NIU really finds themselves very deep now. And speaking of Wisconsin, that was the team that absolutely destroyed NIU last last year in the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. And now they're on the verge of having that same outcome happen here today in Mobile at the GoDaddy.com Bowl. Harnish is 
able to find his man. That's going to be 100 yards, passing for Chandler Harnish. Nathan Palmer with the catch. But I know the, the stat he wants to see go up. It's not really a stat, but it's that, that big number next to the NIU name that says 3. He wants to see that move to 10, move to 17, eventually move to 24. Maybe get the lead, and that's a good start by getting the first down on that run by Jasmine Hopkins. Harnish is pressured. He still gets it away. Has an open man and incomplete. And that's just, that wasn't a bad throw on Harnish's part. He had a wide open man. That's just more skill on the Alabama side to leap up and be able to use your defense to get that ball knocked away. That's just pure skill on the Crimson Tide. We saw them, saw them do this earlier in the game and it worked out. And I'd almost say for five yards it works out pretty well right there. Third and five now. First down and no, incomplete. He dropped it. So they will have to punt it away, which is dangerous for Alabama. Or excuse me, dangerous for NIU, not dangerous for Alabama. If Alabama can continue to pick up the pace, I believe they've only been stopped once on offense. They can uh, start to put this thing away, and then the top executives with the Crimson Tide, they can start to figure out where do we want to go for the second round. Wait a minute, A.J. McCarron, let's not speak too quickly. Lee Corson says, hold on one minute. We got an interception, and this is a uh, potential to be a whole new ball game. Dominique Ware, the cornerback, comes in with the interception. McCarron inexplicably tossed it inexplicably. I can, I can speak through the interception. So now, new life. Hopkins with the run. Picks up seven. New life has been, has been lifted, has been inflated into this NIU team. Third and in inches. Do they dare run it one more time? They're lined up in shotgun. Maybe not. I don't know. No, they are not going to run it. On third and in inches, they throw it. Look at the time. Harnish will run it. Harnish will juke and jive first down for Northern Illinois. If you're a Huskies fan, get your rally cap on. I mean, you can see there wasn't many people up front for Alabama. And that's probably why Harnish had to throw it, because everyone was back deep. Surprised Dante Hightower didn't try to come up and get the tackle. Fresh set of downs. Hopkins takes it again, and will be brought down at the line. And that's Daniels, the backup. Hopkins must be resting on the sideline. Second down and nine. Another handoff to Daniels, and he's going to get stopped. They've lost three on this drive, so on third and 13, it's passing time. And for NIU, you want to try to get your points. You don't want to have to settle for another field goal. This is a clutch play. we got three wide out set on the far side. Harnish rolling end zone batted around incomplete Alabama will hold so They will have to settle for a field goal and even though it's nice to get the points Let's see if he even does get the points. No, they don't Wow after all that Northern Illinois it sails on them. No good. So they come away a potential chance to have 14 points at this point in the ball game. They have three right now as Sims pushes that one wide. Here comes Trent Richardson. Easy running for him. 
142 yards, I think. Uh, besides Isaiah Crowell on Georgia, I think Richardson might be leading all running backs so far in the BCS playoffs in terms of running. Why not give it to him again? Oh, man, he it all oh, breaks the tackle and the rest is speed. Now, without a doubt, he is the leading running back in the playoffs so far, Trent Richardson. And I think I may just turn my opinion. Look at that, breaking tackles. I think I might just turn my opinion around on that young man. Because I said he didn't deserve too many of these postseason awards when Monty Ball was out rushing him, out touchdowning him, but right now he's proving it. Trent Richardson's deserved everything he's had come to him so far as Bama, the junior from Pensacola, Florida, helps lead his team 28 to 3 over Northern Illinois. This has got to leave a bitter taste in their mouth right now, trying to bounce back from last season's humiliating defeat in their only other BCS playoff appearance. It looks like for the Huskies, it's about to be two for two. And for them, the playoffs really started two weeks ago when they took on Ohio. That was essentially a playoff game in and of itself. Winner of that one went on to the big dance. Loser went on to the NIT. And actually, Ohio, they're on to the second round. NIU is hoping, to, hoping the rally monkey or something will pop out. Hopkins will get things going with a nice run. And... For NIU, it's not like they've been completely overpowered in this game. They've had really good plays on offense. They've moved the ball well, but just in the long run, they haven't been able to put the ball in the end zone. And then they've had plays like that where they've just simply gone backwards. Second down and 12. They run it again, and Hopkins will get all of that back and then some. And I missed. No, that wasn't Hopkins. That was uh, the backup once again. That was Daniels. Akeem Daniels. In there. They switch back and forth so often. Third down and one. Maybe you run it again. They will. First down, NIU, and more into Crimson Tide territory. Daniels with the run. And that's, that would be a heck of a start to just move the ball like that. Slowly but surely. I know you don't have a lot of time to be using the word slowly, but anything to get the first touchdown of the board. Well, now they're trying to go up Temple up tempo and Harnish can't get it to his man it's just more good defense by the Crimson Tide Mark Barron with the defense and Harnish will be flushed out of the pocket and he eventually hits the turf it's been that kind of a day unfortunately for what's who is a really good quarterback in Chandler Harnish and that will do it for the third we got one quarter to get one quarter to go here in Mobile at the GoDaddy.com Bowl the senior from Bluffton Indiana Chandler Harnish is hoping that miracles can come true on this cold afternoon in Mobile He's going to need to score four touchdowns in about five minutes, and that's not going to do it. Incomplete, and that takes us to a fourth down and ten. And the Huskies will be forced to punt it away. So if things continue to roll as they are, <laughs> I didn't mean that to be a pun, but it actually kind of turned out to be. If the tide continues to roll on as they have been, while you watch this game track about Trent Richardson, the Trent Richardson highlights. And Alabama will be the third top seed to move on. Last season, two of our top seeds went out in the first round, and that was Auburn and Stanford, while Oregon just barely slipped by last season as the number two seed. 
For Alabama, they would get the next choice of the bowl game. We already know that the Liberty Bowl is off the table. Would they go to Atlanta? Maybe they go to Florida? Who knows? And waiting in the wings for the Alabama Crimson Tide in the second round. It is the Clemson Tigers. They were the first ever winners of a 2011 Bowl Championship Series Bowl game. They kicked off the BCS playoffs in the Beef of Brady's Bowl with a dominating victory over TCU. And Trent Richardson, Trent Richardson just continues to do it on his feet. 250 rushing yards. Beast mode has been locked and loaded for Trent. Two teams that blew out opponents in the first round will meet in the second round and oh wait a minute interception it might be me speaking too soon again McCarron throws a second interception to Northern Illinois picked off by number 53 Pat Schiller the linebacker the senior from Geneva Illinois first interception of the year So Harnish will work with five wideouts. He'll throw it. Has an open man. Just shy of the first down. We'll go. No, we won't go to hurry up mode. I figured at this point. Got to be in hurry up offense mode. Speaking of upsets, something we didn't even touch upon while we're trying to throw the word upset around and together. The Alabama bracket has already had two upsets. Florida State over Boise and West Virginia over Wisconsin. So in terms of upsets... Half of this bracket has been upset, so first down for Harnish. So go back to that whole upset talk we talked in the beginning. Add two more upsets to that. Half of this bracket's been upsets. NIU trying to make the impossible happen. They're going to need four touchdowns in less minutes than they need touchdowns. A handoff inside the five-yard line. That was Hopkins. NIU, couldn't they make the impossible happen? Harnish will run it. The senior slides just short. That was your moment, Chandler Harnish, and you blew it. You got to go for those. They're going to need more touchdowns than they have minutes remaining in this football game. The handoff, a loss of yards. Hopkins tackled. Dante Hightower was the one that forced that. So now you're down to third and goal. Need five yards to hit the end zone. Harnish sending a man in motion. Takes it out of the gun. Rolling right, down goes Chandler Harnish. Dante Hightower with the sack, and that's the second time he's forced a loss in two plays. Fourth down, and for NIU, I think you want to try to get a touchdown, yes. If nothing else, send your seniors, send everyone out. Let them know they scored more touchdowns than LSU did against this team. No, it's not going to happen. Intercepted. Oh, man, that's an unfortunate way. I hope that NIU will have one more shot at it on offense, because that's an unfortunate way for Chandler Harness to end his senior season. The defensive back Jones is the one who picked it off. And he hasn't had too much playing time this year and probably some of the backups might be in at this point. Trent Richardson though gets it for a couple of yards. Richardson runs it again. First down.
under 40 seconds there. 45 now we're under 40. Richardson now simply padding the stat book and doesn't look like NIU will get another shot. And again, that's really just an unfortunate way for a great player like Chandler Harnish to end his senior year. And wow, we've seen many seniors disappointed. Chandler Harnish, Kellen Moore. We've seen others that have taken full advantage of the Bowl Championship Series playoffs. And here at the GoDaddy.com Bowl, the fans in Mobile, Alabama, were treated to exactly what they wanted to see. That was an Alabama thumping over NIU. Take any one of those massive Trent Richardson runs. <laughs> and, well, take your pick and say that's play of the game. So touchdown for Trent. And see the coaches congratulating each other for a good game down there. Nick Saban and of course NIU coach Dave Dorson. Alabama will move on. They will duke it out with Clemson. Trent Richardson, 266 yards rushing. Dominant performance for him. I'm still more impressed with the kicker that got the touchdown at the end of the second quarter. But two teams that dominated in their opening round games in Alabama and Clemson. That should be an interesting and fun game next week in the BCS playoffs. Where will Alabama be playing that game at with Clemson? Well, we'll let you know in just a few moments when we take a look at these final highlights. Trent Richardson. Here's another one of his big runs. And the blocking, too, really helped out Richardson. That was impressive. How he was able to just throw that defender off of him. And then the rest was speed. I mean, he still had guys chasing him. And the rest was Trent Richardson's speed. And, oh, you hate to see it again. Especially if you're an NIU fan. And I'm just a fan myself of Chandler Harness. I know what a great player he is. Hate to see a senior season end like that. But he did get to go out as NIU champions. And I think the most of all for his team, that's a pretty cool thing to be able to do for NIU. Taking a look, player stats. A.J. McCarron didn't have to do a whole lot. Three for six, and two of those passes went for interception. So that's why they kept it out of his hand. On the other side, Harnish, eight for 22. 114 yards, no touchdowns, and he had two interceptions, so the defenses were playing wild today. In terms of rushing, Hopkins tried to do his part. He had a couple of big runs when he needed them. 11 attempts, 37 yards, couldn't get into the end zone, though, but Richardson, there's your man. 18 tries, 266 yards. And even McCarron, when they were doing that earlier fakey stuff, still was able to get it out there 51 yards, so he didn't have a horrible day. I mean, rush, receiving, not much you can say for receiving stats. That's that's about it down the line. Uh, I mean, Alabama, they really were able to rest a lot of their players thanks to Trent Richardson. On the other side of it, you had uh, Palmer and Hopkins came up with a few grabs. Your leading yards getter was Moore, who had a couple of those nice receptions early on. Defense, unfortunately for NIU, not much to say. They really let Richardson run all over them. For the Alabama side, uh, didn't allow too much more, but they did hold NIU to just three. For NIU, though, you got to be excited with the way that your team was able to get the two big interceptions against a really tough Alabama offense. Team stats, probably not going to be pretty. They're actually all knotted up, 11 first downs apiece, but total offense nearly double, almost double, what Alabama had compared to NIU on offense. Uh, passing yards, I mean, give that one to NIU, of course. But if you look at rushing yards, it's not even a contest. Red zone efficiency. Again, if NIU is able to score twice in the red zone and not have to settle for that field goal, they have 21 points easily. But instead, 0%, that'll hurt you. Alabama, if they're going to want to beat Clemson, they're going to need to address that. The two interceptions, the two turnovers, can't have that happen. Other than that, total yards, 
A hundred more total yards Alabama had than the Huskies. And that's going to do it here from Mobile. Lad Peebles Stadium. We hope you enjoyed this game. Alabama and NIU. If you haven't seen it yet on the YouTube page, the game that was going on at the same time as this one, the Independence Bowl between Kansas State and Auburn. And coming up at 8, your primetime games as we come to a close. It's been three exciting days of action. But we will end it with these final three games coming up at 8 o'clock. And that will be the Craft Fight Hunger Bowl. Number 4, Stanford versus number 29, Notre Dame, the Irish. Making their first BCS playoffs appearance. Well, Stanford at number 4 last year was upset. They're hoping they don't have to go home again. You're also going to see at 8 the Insight Bowl. Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III going up against Southern Miss, the Conference USA champs. Southern Miss, the playoffs started for them two weeks ago when they upset Case Keenum and the Houston Cougars. Do they have another upset in them? Well, you'll find that out in just a little bit. And then the final NIT game, it'll be the Christmas Bowl from Los Angeles. And it'll be the very first ever Christmas Bowl. That one will be between Rutgers and Tulsa. That one will be on ESPNU. So, no excuses. You got three games. Maybe hook up three TVs. Get ready to go. The Craft Fight Hunger Bowl, the Insight Bowl, and the Christmas Bowl. Coming at you from California and Arizona. Up next here, the Bowl Championship Series Playoffs. So let's go ahead. We're going to fill the brackets in now. Alabama, they're going to take the short three-hour trip from Tuscaloosa. And Clemson will also have a short trip. It'll be the Chick-fil-A Bowl, ACC versus SEC in the second round. And since Alabama's made their pick, we can now look at number three as they will get the next pick. It's Oklahoma-Oklahoma State Bedlam rematch, and it will be in San Antonio, Texas, the Alamo Bowl. That one should be sold out, and that dome should be rocking for that one. We will find out in just a few moments who, uh, where the rest of the second round teams will go after Stanford and the rest of the teams finish up with their games. To wrap things up, to recap, Alabama, Clemson. It'll be December 23rd at 8 p.m. on ESPN Prime Time in Atlanta, Georgia. Alabama and Clemson in the Chick-fil-A Bowl, and then in the Alamo Bowl, Bedlam Part 2. Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State, that's Saturday at 4.30. That game will also be on ESPN.